Welcome, Solara here. I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome if you are brand new um, to my channel. Welcome if you are returning or returning subscriber or you've been here from the beginning. Thank you so much for all the ways that you guys uh, support me and help me to appreciate in my value um, to the collective and in my light. I really do appreciate all of your sweet comments, your emails, um, your subscriptions, your donations. I appreciate all all the ways that you sew into me also. So um, I decided to come on here and do a plain reading. I do have some downloads, but I don't feel like the, the full message that Spirit's wanting to get through to me with the downloads is complete. Um, so I'm going to just put them to the side for now, and I'm going to just do a regular reading. Um, I've been feeling a lot of, uh, well, I've been feeling a lot of different mechanisms in terms of the fuckery or, you know, the, the attacks slash activations. Um, I feel like a very vulnerable place right now of attack is the third eye and the crown. And the reason for that is in order to take you out of your truth, take us out of our truth. So um, when our third eye or our crown comes under attack, it changes the way we are, um, we connect with the truth of who we are divinely. Um, that would be the crown. When our crown is under attack, it changes the truth of how we connect to who we truly are divinely. It causes confusion and schism in, um, in uh, self. You know, it, it causes a, a deeper separation between um, us and our higher selves, which is why they like to, to send those crown attacks. Now, when the third eye comes under attack, then what occurs is that it's difficult to discern uh, the invisible. It's difficult to tune into, like I've been explaining to you guys, like only about 7% of reality is what you're experiencing in the physical and the other like 93% of reality is invisible. And when your third eye is under attack, it's difficult to connect with that other 93% in order to discern the wholeness of truth, which is why um, they like to mess with us in that way. But the whole purpose of that, I feel, is like it's in order to access um our solar plexus energy, because that's what gives them access to the sacral energy. And um, I want to explain this without making it too complicated. So your solar plexus energy is very much connected with your Leo energy, for one thing. Your solar plexus is, is literally your life force. It's your sun energy. Um, and it's your seat of your personal will. It's where you make choices that either align with your divine truth or don't align based upon how you feel about yourself and based upon whether you are in alignment with your divine truth, which is why the crown and the third eye, um, you know, fuckery is coming through right now. Now, whoever is in charge of your solar plexus is kind of in charge of your energy. Um, because if somebody can control you from like an external energy, can enforce its will upon you, that would be taking control of your solar plexus, then it also can give them access to other parts of your energy field. This is what a lot of the, the spell casting is ultimately about. It's about getting you to step off your throne um, and to no longer um, choose to be sovereign over your own energy field and to therefore open it up. So one of the main ways um, to access our energy fields is, to, is through the solar plexus. And it's also why in the matrix, the whole system was run off of wounding children and then exploiting childhood wounds. Um, throughout. And then also, you know, the other more obvious forms of child abuse, which run 
um, the energies and the false grids of the matrix system. So there feels, it feels right now like, and I don't say this, I never say this again to fear monger. I say this to help you to be informed and to connect with some of the things that you're feeling right now. It really does feel like right now that many of you are like at the final frontier of a lot of this energy. And what that means is that it's like, it's a deep, 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 like guttural cleanse of the, of the, of the roots and the residues, um, you know, residual energies, but also like the root root energies. And the way my guides were showing it to me, it's like, um, it's like you're being polished right now. So you've been through the the the, the refiner's furnace. You, you've, you've been the coal and you've been turned into the diamond and now it's more polishing than anything. And so what I mean when I say that is that for many of you, even through these energies that try to attack your crown and your third eye, you have become and you are becoming so solid in who you are divinely that even when they send a cloud, because it might just feel like a cloud, right? Even when that cloud comes, you know, you know that it's a cloud and you know that it's, you know who you are so succinctly that you know it's not your energy. So it's easy to engage in these energy wars in the sense that you can discern now who you are versus other people's projections, deflections, attempts to um, get back uh, control over you and all of that stuff because, you know, that that energy is real. Like that um, wants, that, that like external beings trying to take control of other beings' energy fields, it's a constant theme and it picks up certain uh, times of the year. But for many of you, like I said, it feels like you are at this final frontier. And so um, those energies don't just relinquish you and they're just like, oh, okay, fair, fair enough, you've won. You know, they keep on going until they can't. Or they keep on going until um, you're so, so perfected in your own divinity that there's no need for it for you. Because remember, all of this at the end of the day, as annoying as it is, it is for us. It, these are the very energies, the very energies that are attacking us are the ones that are helping us to wake up into our power. And now every time they enter our fields, it's like they are coming to collect um, whatever is left of their energy in our fields, those roots and, and residue. Um, I was mentioning that in another reading, I forget whether it was the last one or the one before, how when they cast their illusions into, or they project their illusions into our fields, what's happening now is it's like going in and, and, and picking up and collecting any residual um, energy from previous um, illusions their illusions that have lived within us and, and had become a part of us. When they cast these energies, it's like uh, those ones are coming in to pick up the older ones so they can all vacate the premises. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just coming in and I'm doing a reading. Uh, I want to see where to start, where to start. I feel like I want to go into my herbal deck and let's see where spirit leads us from um, from there. Let's see what messages want to come out. In terms of attacking energies, I have been picking up accident energies. Like um, that has been a big theme over the past 24 hours, like casting energies to cause accidents and um, misfortune in that regard. And then one message that kept coming through um, overnight for me was um, uh, this desire to get beings back into karmic factory settings. That, that was, that was the, the phrase, karmic factory settings. You know how like you can reset your phone to its original settings and erase everything? It's kind of like there's a, there is this really... Um, ambitious desire for some beings right now to um, to program us back into our karmic factory settings and um, out of all of the divine work and healing you've been doing. Um, 
almost like erasing all of that progress to get you back there. So be aware of that because I'm sure with that, I didn't really delve into it past um, that message, but I'm sure with that, that comes with timeline fuckery. And as I, as, and as I say that, I'm looking at, um, I have the, the uh, present chart up because I was going, I was looking at it for another reason and the moon is in Cancer. Oops, the moon is in Cancer presently and so um some of the things that were going on around the new moon in cancer are making their way back around to ask you kind of like what are you opting into again you will always be given the opportunity to opt in or opt out of an energy so think back to the new moon in cancer a month ago what was going on for you some of those themes are coming up again to uh you've been through a, a full moon cycle since the last one what what is your are you, are you sure that is your final answer kind of who wants to be a millionaire are you sure that's your final answer kind of energy okay um yeah i bright <laughs> oh you can't make this shit up so i bright okay Eyebright is a herb of the air. I love eyebright. It does exactly what it says. Okay, so eyebright is actually a herb um, that is connected to the element of air, but it's also connected to the sun and to Leo. So it's Leo energy, very interestingly enough. I don't know if you can see the symbols at the top, the Leo energy in the gold alchemy symbol. Okay, so Eyebright is a herb that we work with in herbal medicine in general when you have like issues with, with the eye, right? Um, like conjunctivitis, um, situations like that where the eye needs to be, uh, like you can make an, an eye rinse with eyebright to calm, um, to calm the membranes of the eye down, okay? In energy work, we use eyebright to remove illusions okay so it's the removal of illusions so you can see things clearly it's for prophetic dreaming and it increases your third eye power and your clairvoyance it helps you to see all aspects of a situation so right um, off the bat there is there are energies here that don't want you to have and I said this in the beginning I said you know um, when you see the seven percent of what is actually real versus the 93 percent you get to see the whole picture when your third eye is clear this is uh, this is really what they're trying to obscure right now your ability to see the whole picture and I feel like it's not only your ability to see the whole picture when it comes to just like yourself and who you truly are but there's someone or something or other beings here that are trying to what's they just said occlude occlude I need to look that up what what does occlude mean one second guys occlude Okay, occlude, to cause to become closed or obstruct, to prevent the passage of, to absorb or adsorb and retain a substance, to close off, to close up or block off, to block something. So yeah, I mean, it's just another way of saying the same thing, but they said occlude stop up a passage they're asking me to look at that to stop up a passage or an opening so i wonder if it's not only about because what i'm feeling is yeah and then at the bottom of the deck we have anise seed and um anise is about the removal of mental magic um, and remember, I think I said that at the beginning of, of the video, I said there's a lot of, um, no, I said about the crown and the third eye, but that is mental, mental fuckery. There's been a lot of um, mental magic fuckery to get you, because mental energy is what connects you with truth, okay? It's why it's the sword's energy. And your truth, your ability to connect with truth is your power. This is why in the tarot, um, uh, sword's energy is about the pursuit of truth 
and your own personal power and all the ways, all the things you have to come into, um, that you have to run into in the pursuit of getting back your truth and your power. All of the games that you deal with with people, systems, self, your own mind games, that's the sword suit because it's all about the pursuit of truth and power. So there's something here about, um, it's like there's this energy of, I keep on seeing like you're at this final frontier of something and there's so, there's like some someone, something, you know, a, another person, being, group, faction, corporation, order, coven, whoever it is, or all of the above, is trying to um, stop you from seeing the whole picture that's going to get you ahead. But it's more than that. It's almost like um, it's trying to mess with your vision of yourself, but also mess with your ability to see, to connect with all of the details you need to move ahead clearly. Karmic factory settings. It's almost like someone's trying to re it's like a game, it is a game. It's like someone's trying to reset you in some kind of way. And whenever there's a reset, it's all about fucking around with timelines. But it's, again, it's in order to, um, in order to put them in charge over your vehicle. In and like I said, in charge over your solar plexus. So when I say in charge over your vehicle, I'm talking about your bodies, your, your energetic field is a chariot. They want to take over what it is that you have um, accrued and accomplished through healing, especially through cancer season. Maybe this is why this new moon in cancer energy is coming up again. They're, they're letting me see it right now with the moon in cancer. And I remember um, during cancer season, there was a lot of timeline fuckery. And it's almost like they're trying to repeat that but I don't feel like they're doing it with great success because it's like, you know, at this point. Um, and like I said to you before, it's like when they come into your fields at this point to cast illusions, it's like they're breaking any residual illusions that are left in your fields that, that had you in states of self-deception or um, had you in like unable to connect with your power and your truth to begin with. So let's go into a karmic deck. Let's let's get into this. I'm going to go into this karmic deck. Mental magic. I've really been feeling that a lot. And again, for, for many of you, what I've been feeling is that um, to continue with the theme of some of the readings from earlier on this week, some of you have this sacral energy that you're not even aware you possess. And you're not aware of it. You haven't even, even with all of your healing, you haven't even fully connected to the wholeness of it because it's been so tapped into by other external energies and distributed for their own like selfish, narcissistic, greedy, nefarious purposes that you haven't fully um, tuned into the wholeness of it yet. Um, and it's almost like maybe this is the final frontier, the final frontier to you being able to access that because truth be told, and I've talked to, I don't want to go into this too much in this reading. I have talked, I talked about it in the last reading, I think before. Your sacral energy is your sacred energy. And as such, it's what they're looking to harvest from you through um, organized religion and um, false spiritual systems. And the reason that is, is because uh, your sacral energy, especially like your sacral energy is your womb energy, it is a portal to other realities. It is your portal. And that's the, maybe this is why they were showing me a clue, because it was to prevent passage. That's what they kept on showing me, that, um, that part was a, a, like blocking passage, to prevent passage. Um, to prevent the passage of um, your um, your womb energy, your sacral energy, is um, is a portal to other realities, and it's it's your portal 
to your own higher reality. It's your portal into, you could say it's even your portal into your new earth reality. What it is that you, um, all the resources that you've been given, it's birthed through that portal. Um, you know, your sacral energy connects you to your abundance, your ability to birth all that you are into physical existence. And so up until now, you haven't been able to birth the truth of who you are divinely because your energy has been hijacked. And the first place they hijacked it was through your solar plexus because your solar plexus, again, is your place of personal will. It's where you make all of your decisions, okay, based upon either having a connection to your upper chakras and being in divine alignment with your truth and who you are and who the divine says you are, or through being manipulated by external energies who ultimately... Um, you're not in, you're not sovereign. You're, it's not your personal will. It's someone else's will being enforced upon you. And that's the point because when that can occur, you live in states of shame for who you are. Hence the reason why we do not, uh, the way that we abandon our solar plexus energy is by being ashamed of who we are. Okay. It's why the solar plexus is the seat of all toxic shame. And the sacral center is the seat of all toxic guilt. Okay. So whenever you are not in alignment with who you are divinely and you're, and you, you don't reverence yourself in that position and you live from a place of self-betrayal and shame, you give up um, you give up like command over your own solar plexus. And when you give up command over your own solar plexus, it's like you give up, um, you give up command over your energy field. Okay. Um, so it's almost like there's something here about you recovering this last bit of your solar plexus energy to, to, to recoup full 1144 in my clock to recoup full sovereignty over self, to, to get back your Taurus field, your energy field now for self. And this is so important because like I said, your sacral energy through religion, they make you feel guilty for being a human being. They make you feel guilty for even existing. Some of you came into the world, right? And you've never felt okay. Like from the time you were a child, you may have been made to feel guilty for even existing, okay? And um, and that's kind of the point. That was the point of, of a lot of the spell work that's been being cast towards you since you were a child. It is to make you feel ashamed of self and guilty for, for existing. Because for as long as you're feeling that way, your energy field is, uh, is open for attack. I hope I'm making sense. Um, and so for many of you, your the literal families you chose to incarnate are the ones who um, introduced and built these narratives upon which um, all of this toxic shame and toxic guilt was able to, um, to mature and to proliferate and to, uh, you know, become your narrative. And for some of you, it was an unconscious thing, but for some of you, it was really like um, uh, these families, uh, you know, like um, being in connection with these other orders and covens and, you know, um, programs, GOVT programs that were designed to purposely put you in certain psychological states so that they would have access to your energy. Um, I want to say also, because this was coming up and I didn't say it last time because this has been a theme this week, even in the reading I did before this, um, we were talking about how people pray and use that as a form of witchcraft. And I was saying to you that it, it violates universal law because it, um, it goes against another person's will and therefore their autonomy. And the one thing that 
the divine has given us all is free will and not even, you know, God, source, violates that. So when other beings are trying to get you to live a certain way or be a certain way or do a certain thing that is contrary to your personal will for your own, excuse me, your own energy, that's in violation of universal law. So there's something here about the correction and the balancing that's happening of that that's happening with that right now on a personal level, but also on a collective level, meaning that karma is rolling out right now for those who have been the main conscious perpetrators of breaking universal law and enforcing their will on others and keeping them blind to the fact that they're doing that. That's one thing. But for another thing, on a personal level, we're taking back authority over our own solar plexus energy, over our own wills. And when we do that, we are also closing off any further access to our sacral energies, but not just our sacral energies, but our energy field in general. And what that's going to do, what that is doing, is it's cutting off your sacral energy from those who have been harvesting it in order to cloak themselves in it. And the reason beings would want your caliber and quality of sacral energy that you have yet to even begin to experience because that's how powerful it is, um, is in order to um, have, a, have an energy of magnetism around them, charisma. Um, some of the main ones who are uh, using your energy are the ones who are the, the, the movers and shakers that influence everything in our world through being the, the faces of certain things, whether that be in politics, entertainment, you name it. Um, religion. The sacral energy is the divine feminine, divine mother energy. It draws, it's a, it's a magnetic, it's a, it's a very powerful magnetic force. In other words, it pulls people in. Think about our celebrity culture and how people are so drawn to certain figures, okay? Um, I don't know if I want to go into that anymore. But know that this is a major time for many of you to get the fullness of your own energy under your own personal authority, which ultimately is going to call back your own unique brand of magnetism. Your divine feminine energies will be fully recovered through, um, well, your solar plexus is masculine energy. It's your ability to stand for yourself, but to also choose yourself. So a lot of the attacks right now are, are coming against many of you because you're standing loudly in your truth and you're choosing yourself. And that is upsetting beings in your personal reality, but it's also upsetting people collectively too. Those people who don't want to relinquish um, their programs. The energy wars are real, guys. It's just like, it's not even sometimes, it's not even um, a conscious thing. Like, I don't want to get into like the, the semantics tonight of like the unconscious ways that people attack you that feel like fucking spell work because it is. It is. What do you want to speak to us tonight? Can't tell what flipped over. That flipped over. What is it? Oh, this is so. This is. I'm. I'm so. I'm so like over this shit. Sex magic. Sex magic. And it's ancestral stuff too, because incest spirits was coming up at the bottom. 
Let's get some more information on this. I'm so over this Venusian sex magic <laughs> shit. I'm just like so over it. But I mean, this was a, now that I think about it, this was a big theme in the new moon in Cancer. Now that I'm thinking about it, the new moon in Cancer was when I woke up that morning and I was smelling all of that Venusian sex magic. I was smelling beer, urine, and sex. That's what I was smelling that morning. So that makes sense too. It's coming back around. What is this about? love binds you know it's really uh it's not funny but i was just thinking about this uh just i think a day and a half ago on thursday i was thinking about this when the moon was in gemini it feels like every moon in gemini they attack divine contracts every moon in gemini so be aware of that especially if you are in divine contracts be aware that that's a time to step up your own protection around your union energies and also to be very aware of the ways that um, you will be used or they will attempt to use you um, against one another. Whether And this doesn't have to be um, romantic. It can be platonic. It can be business. Um, but the moon in Gemini is becoming... I've been watching the energy and it feels like every month when the moon is in Gemini, there is an, an attack against divine contracts. And it can be very subtle in nature, which makes it so unassuming, but it's there. It's there. So the sex magic and the love minds. Okay. Um, dream binding. Definitely. I've been feeling that. And money blocks. So let me show you. Because, okay. So we have love binds. We have money blocks. And we have dream binding. We still have cursed objects and gifts at the bottom of the deck. Still playing those games. It just feels like it's really funny. I don't know. It just feels like there's a lot of going all out with these attempts. And yet every, for me at least, every time they come into my field, they're just feeling weaker and weaker and weaker and more obvious, which again is another sign that it's coming to a close. Um, so the card that came out was while you were sleeping. We do have the 10th house at the bottom of the deck. And the 10th house is all about um, career, your success. It's to do with material contracts. It's father energy also. And Leo season is really about... Um, Leo season is about father wounds, but it's about the father wounds that are incurred by way of uh, the passivity of the masculine energy, um, because it is born of, it's the masculine energy that's born, it's the distorted, math, the, the father wound energy that we're dealing with right now is the dis distorted masculine energy that is born from men who are passive in the protection of their own children. And they're especially passive because they're under the control, oftentimes mind control, sexual manipulation of a distorted feminine energy. So a lot of the Leo father wounds have to do with the lack of protection, the lack of showing up, and the lack of um, building of confidence of a child in themselves due to um, a father figure who is ultimately afraid. And when you think about that, it's like, um, it may sound like, oh, that's not a common thing, but it is. So think about a uh, regular, um, think about regular, you know, culture and how they depict um, heterosexual marriages and how we say things like happy wife, happy life, and, and you have all of these sitcoms and shows and movies that depict men who are under the control of manipulative women as if that's a normal thing. Um, and think about even how uh, culture depicts marriage and how, you know, a man doesn't want to get married because it's the old ball and chain and all of this. It's, it's all about coming under the control 
of a distorted feminine energy that manip that emotionally manipulates the masculinity out of that man to the point where he won't stand up for himself and he definitely won't stand up for his children. So it's a very common theme because it's another matrix program. That's too many. Remote viewing and psychic surveillance. That definitely has been a theme. A lot of monitoring spirits right now. Um, that came out the other day, the psychometry devices. Um, the jumping through bathroom portals. All of that. Oh, all of that shit. I've got a whole bunch of cards flying. Uh, money blocks, money wounds, incest spirits. So I feel like... Um, I'm feeling like this money blocks and money wounds and incest spirits energy is to do with um, energy being projected towards your own sense of value, okay? Because the way you feel about money, the way um, you're able to tune into your abundance has everything to do with your own sense of personal value. Okay, and then it also has to do again with access to your sacral energy based upon the full recovery of your value system. Because your Taurus energy field, your light body, your vehicle, it is the fullness of your value system. It's all of your divine resources, if that makes sense. So it is who you are divinely. And if you are in tune with who you are divinely, then you have a whole different value system that's different from this world, from this matrix. And this whole value system that you have that is part of the recovery of your divine resources is also what gives you access to your rich sacral energy. And it's also your divine value system and the recovery of your Taurus energy field is also part of your passport in the new earth financial system. Okay, so a lot of cards. Jumped out, I'm not going to. I said it. I did say it. accident energies. Accident energies. As I have an accident and all the cards go flying. Um, freezer spells and delay magic. So it's like, it's just all of the same stuff. Fifth house, which is Leo. Fourth house, which is Cancer. Um, Saturnian magic, of course, it's Saturday. <laughs> you know, it's like, come on. Hiding and cloaking, invisibility spells and shape-shifting. I saw that today. North node block and south node pull. So all of the, the usual suspects at this point is really what it is. And the whole point of it is to, um, let's go back to what, to this occlude energy, is to prevent the passage. It's to prevent you passing from, it's like to prevent you from passing through this final frontier that is getting you all the way free, all the way out. Some of you feel that. You feel like th this is like, um, it's never, you know, like it's never fully over, but you get what I'm saying? Like this is zero, 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 as I say that, reset energies. It's like there's some kind of huge ass hurdle that is here energetically. And when you get over it, it's like um, such a huge leap out of the karmic cycles that life will just never be the same. And that's what many of these energies, these binds, these spells, um, are ultimately trying to get you out of at this point, you know? Um, and again, with the love binds, it's trying, it, it's, uh, it says target of hate, derision, jealousy, and obsession. So another energy that I was feeling very strongly on Thursday is this trying to, um, trying to stop the support that you have coming in. Um, in other beings, in your uh, soul tribe, in your in the community that wants to come in to support you now and that you're here to also support in order to grow um, together. There's a lot of messing around with people's perception, a lot of glamour. And this is again, third eye, um, third eye and crown. Um, a lot of playing with other people's perception of you right now. Um, 
pay attention. It's it's it becomes so obvious that the minute you see it, you can just begin to like cast it down with your words and and call in your protection and do what it is that you do with these energies. But um, it's becoming very very obvious. It's becoming more and more um, more and more obvious. So. Let's see. Let's see what Archangel Michael has to say. And that's not to say that it, it doesn't cause like a, like annoyances and all manner of, of, of things in your life. It's not that. It's just that it just feels at this point, especially this week for some reason, for me it's felt this way, it just feels so fucking predictable at this point. It feels so fucking predictable. And all I can say to that is that it means that it's coming to a close because their illusions no longer can stand in some of your fields. They just, it just won't, it's just so obvious to you at some point that it's just like, mm -mm, that you've reached the point of no return. So look at this. Your vibration is rising. This is a time of great spiritual growth for you. You are evolving to occupy a higher energetic frequency. That's right. You've, you, you are at the final frontier. You have reached a certain level of, um, you know, of healing that you can't be duped by this shit anymore. It like literally feels like you're, you're being polished right now. That's really what I'm, there's no more refining in these, in this particular cycle or with these particular beings. There's no more refining now. It's just polishing your diamond. You've been through the fires of refinement and now it's just polishing. Your loved ones are safe. Let go of your fear and worry for your loved ones. I am looking after them. So I feel like this is coming out because some of you might have this fear around the fact that you're moving, um, you're moving forward, you're moving on. And um, this ascension path is, is something that we go through alone right? Even in the midst of other people, we go through it alone because the raising of our energetic frequency, the raising of our own vibration is a personal thing and you can't raise another person's vibration or their frequency for them. And so sometimes when you are on a different frequency than someone else, that's when difficulty and conflict can come because you're no longer on the same wavelength. And so I feel like for some of you, um, there might be this issue of uh, like, I'm on this higher timeline, is this person going to meet me there? And it's interesting, I think I said this about the 8-8 portal, you know, I did say about the 8-8 portal, it's something we have to go through alone. And the reason for that was because it is time for us all as individuals to reach our own highest timelines. And here's the thing about matrix fuckery versus divine love. In the matrix, they try to make you feel as if you are supposed to sacrifice yourself for someone else. In other words, if someone else is, if you're moving ahead of someone else, instead of continuing to move on, you're supposed to wait for another person or you're supposed to drag them with you. Um, and that's where a lot of the toxic crap around the twin flame dynamic comes also. But divine love doesn't tell you to wait for anyone. Divine love tells you to trust that if you're supposed to be on the same path or timeline with another being, that it will happen. And you're not supposed to hold yourself back from moving forward. You're supposed to trust that at every turn, there's divine provision. And it's especially important right now because what we are going through right now, we're going through such a monumental transition on a personal and a collective level where we are moving out of these old narcissistic, abusive templates and paradigms um, for relating with one another codependently where we were literally cannibalizing one another energetically in order to survive dog eats dog world, right? That's what they said. In order to thrive or, or to fake thrive in the matrix, there was no way to do it without cutting down others, cutting down yourself and cutting down others. And so we are putting all of that and all of the trauma that um, we've incurred 
in our own fields because of that, because of it being done to us, but also because of the ways that we participated, because it takes two to tango, you know, um, the ways that we participated, whether through complicity or whether through ignorance, it doesn't really matter. So we're putting all of that aside. We're dealing with all of the trauma that has to do with that. And now we, we're having to learn a new way or we're having to remember the original way, right? And in doing that, we're having to deal with a lot of the toxic ways we learn to relate to, to self and then to others. And in doing that, we're all healing at different rates and at different levels. And eventually we'll get to a place or you'll get to a place, every being will get to a place where we are able to come together in community and create this energy of stasis based upon new earth relational dynamics. But right now, because we're all jumping so many different timelines, it can be a little bit difficult because at certain junctures, it will be time to leave certain people behind and not because the love wasn't there and not because you don't have um, a heart for those beings, but because where, you're go where you are energetically, they aren't. And that doesn't mean you're higher and they're lower or they're, high, or they're higher and you're lower. It's nothing to do with that. That's matrix fuckery that makes us think that there's such a thing. It just means that you are at your highest timeline. They're at their highest timeline. And those two timelines are not converging at this point, which is okay. Um, but we need to be aware of that moving forward because so much of the, the, the programming that we've, we've had around quote unquote loyalty is about self-betrayal and self-sacrifice that ultimately leaves everyone miserable. And when we are miserable, we are not cultivating these new earth energies that are needed to feed the true grids of Gaia and to bring back to life um, how, you know, how we're supposed to be on the earth plane. So whoever is worried about, um, you know, loved ones not being on the same wavelength as you or not going forward with you, um, this is where we learn how to lean in and trust that everyone is where they're supposed to be divinely. And, um, and that doesn't mean that you have to like walk away and leave people. That's not it at all. Although dynamics sometimes have to change. And sometimes some of you will, especially those of you who are going into higher levels of, um, you know, leadership or divine partnerships, because you're here to literally sew in those new earth relational dynamics, you're going to have to make some, um, some tough choices. And that's just the truth, you know, um, but for those of you, especially those of you with children, your your children are going to be okay too. Um, those of you with uh, younger children, especially, you know, your 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 children. You have a family energy signature. Also, you have a family energy frequency, and that's a whole other. <laughs> that's a whole other. Um, you have an individual personal frequency, and then you have a family. Frequency, you have uh, the frequency that comes through your interpersonal fields linking together also. Um, I don't think I want to go into that right now. We're already almost 50 minutes in. I don't want to keep this reading too long tonight. I'm going into the Keepers of the Light deck to see who's supporting. Okay. As I said that two of my cards just flew return to sender not as I said that I'm sorry as I shuffled two cards flew return to sender reversals are necessary so some of you need to be um, aware of, of that continue with your returns what other people think about you isn't your business what do you think about you so this again is this energy of recognizing that um, this is a solitary, even when you're with other people's people, it's a solitary journey. And um, it doesn't matter what other people think about you 
or where you're going or what your own divine instructions are. As long as you are honoring your own truth and your own power, that is what it is ultimately about. Okay. Um, a quick note on return to sender because somebody said in my uh, comments on one of the videos the other day they were saying to they were saying that um, they don't return to sender that they transmute the energy that sent their way with the violet flame and so this is how I this is why I will always say to people about you know this topic if that's what makes you feel good then do it but then I also will always explain to you why I don't think that's necessarily, you know, the most effective way of dealing with that energy. So spiritual laws, well, physical laws mimic spiritual laws. Physical laws are the way they are because they mimic spiritual laws. Okay, and spiritual principles, even if down here on the earth plane, we don't follow them with integrity. Okay, now, if there's a person, a being who is a child abuser, do you transmute their crimes with the violet flame? Do you say, oh, it's okay that you do that and that you're introducing that into other people's energy and into their realities? No, you don't. Some of these beings that are sending you things have been committing heinous spiritual crimes across many timelines and incarnations. And it is that energy that they keep on sending at you it is the energy they are choosing out of their own God, um, uh, like connection, God abilities. They are choosing to use those divine abilities to hurt other beings. They violated crazy spiritual laws. They are part of the reason why the earth is out of complete balance. You don't take the energy that they're sending to continually destroy you. Because I'm talking about beings that are continually like bullying, energetic bullies don't know what it is to, um, to stay out of other people's energy fields, want to play God over other beings. You don't take their energy and transmute it on their behalf. You give it back to them because it's their creation and therefore their responsibility. And I'll tell you why that's important. Because even if these beings are not ascending right now into the new earth, because that kind of behavior is not tolerable in the new earth, and in all frankness, this transmuting energy with the violet flame, it's new earth living. It's not necessarily something that we are here to apply to all of the old world energies um, with that level of grace. Because these beings must also learn their own karmic lessons, so they also have the opportunity to ascend. And all of us, the only reason we were able to ascend was because we had to learn our karmic lessons too. So any time a being is sending you energy and you are transmuting it on their behalf, you are enabling them to continue to do the same thing to you and other beings. You are not giving them the opportunity to take responsibility for their own creations. And the thing about the new earth is that, and this is why even getting back the full, um, being sovereign over yourself and getting back the fullness of your energy field, it's something that can only occur when you learn how to take full accountability for who you are and what you are creating with your God abilities. Okay, so as such, if that's how we ascend and you are transmuting someone else's karmic energy, you are taking away their opportunity to also take full accountability and access 
later on through their own choices, the fullness of their energy field. I hope that makes sense. So you don't have to agree with me. I never put anything out there because I don't need you to follow me, agree with me, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. But this is how I've been shown. There will be a time in the new earth where you're dealing with new earth beings that have a, a respect for other beings' energy fields and the times where we fall into our human um, tendencies and we wound one another or we um, introduce energies into another person's fields and we don't mean to because we're conscious beings, then that's when we can transmute it with the violet flame and say it's okay because we know we're dealing with a conscious being. But when you're dealing with a being who's still stuck in a lower dimension in the way that they're dealing with other beings, you don't transmute that energy for them because you're keeping them stuck and you're keeping them from being able to ascend because they must transmute that energy to learn the karmic lesson to rise to. Okay. Angel Michael, trusting heaven. You are safe. Angels stand close. Surrender your concerns and allow a miracle to occur. So this again is this energy of feeling like, again, some of you, you're on the final frontier of something. And sometimes when you are at that moment of breakthrough is when everything feels darkest. It feels um, the most cloudy. And this is what a lot of these energies are trying to add to that feeling, um, you know, of cloudiness of not really seeing where you're going and the, the attacks against the third eye and the crown. But um, trust, trust in who you are, trust in uh, your divine instructions, trust in um, where it is that you've been shown you're going. Trust in that 93% that you are already feeling is here, even though the 7%, you're not seeing it yet in physical reality. It's here. It's like what I was saying um, in, the, in the reading from last Sunday, you are in active labor and there will be a moment where baby crosses from the body into your arms. And once upon a time, you weren't seeing baby. And then a few seconds later, you're holding baby. And that's where uh, many of us are. And this is where a lot of the blocks are coming because literally, um, and when I get into um, the downloads of what spirit is speaking more through the stuff I've been shown, what I was uh, uh, like, one word that was coming through what I was being shown is like some of, some of you, it's almost like there was this miasma that was on you that is like being removed from you right now. Um, like in a, a, a miasma, a miasma, however you pronounce it, it's like, um, it's like a web, but it's more than a web. It's like, um, it's like a, a, a slime, but it's opaque. And I was literally seeing in the spirit, like it being removed off of certain parts of the body. And um, as it was being removed off of certain parts of the body, those were the parts of the body that were being activated in their gifts. So many of you have been, have been deeply hidden in the spirit. And this is partly what some of this work is about with the returning to karmic factory settings or the desire to do that. Like literally some of you have been like in boxes, in prisons, in black holes, like hidden, like living here in the physical and being overlooked by everything and everyone and not recognizing why, not knowing that it's because spiritually someone literally was, uh, some of you, the, the, um, 
what the spirit was showing me was they literally, the work they were doing was they had you in a box, a black box. They love playing with black boxes and they were blowing smoke into the box to um, occlude, to obscure your third eye or to obscure you from being seen, from being celebrated, from being reached. I hope that makes sense. So what they were doing were they were they were doing spell they were doing it's called um sympathetic magic where you create a circumstance magically um with objects that mimic reality in order to create a certain effect in real time. So they were like they put you in the black box, they had you closed up, hidden. So you're walking around in everyday real life and you're being ignored for all intensive purposes, overlooked in love, overlooked in work, in every way. And, um, and then on top of that, they were blowing smoke into where you were in the box so that you couldn't see that you were in a box, so you couldn't see out, like you're in a fog, you know, like brain fog, crown and third eye fuckery. Then at the bottom, we have charity, prayer and contemplation. Connect with heaven. Ask and you shall receive. Connect with heaven. Ask and you shall receive. This is almost like, again, um, I, and I speak about this all the time. You guys, we all have divine resources and we all have the ability to ask for certain things. And a lot of the time we don't, we don't take full advantage of that. It's like we forget who we are. And it's almost like you're being called with this charity and Archangel Michael card to, um, to connect with that ability to call on angels, call on um, beings of light to assist you, to help you to see especially on those, on those days where you feel you're under attack, call Michael and ask him to remove those cords. Ask him to clear your fields. These, the minute that you recognize that these things are happening, you're no longer a victim. You can start to stand up and fight. And sometimes we forget that. And that's what these energies want us to do. They want us to fall into this place of feeling helpless and powerless. Maybe this is what the karmic factory settings are again to feel helpless and powerless, like your circumstances are so much bigger than who you actually fucking are. Your circumstances aren't bigger than who you are because your circumstances are matrix illusions and you are the real divine deal. But they want you to keep believing in the illusion instead of yourself. I think... I think that's it. I think that's it. A lot of rose energy has been coming up recently. Um, for those of you also who have strong connections or you're of the divine lineage of Mar Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene and Yeshua, um, that energy is coming through very strongly as it often will this time of the year because of the serious gateway through the Cancer, Leo and Virgo season, that energy will often be quite strong. Um, but it's a beautiful time to connect, to connect with that. Also, if you feel, um, if you feel the call to that energy, also they they are all. Mother Mary is all about um, your ability to birth the Christ the energy within you. Um, Mary Magdalene is all about your ability to activate and to cause that energy to rise and to learn how to use it. And the, and the Yeshua energy, the Christ, is all about your ability to go out and to be able to actively engage and use that energy to create material changes. So it's not a big surprise that those three are like here right now because many of you, many of us, that's where we are right now. Your Christed energy is here. You've learned how to activate it and cause it to rise. And now it's time to make that transition at the final frontier to begin to take it out and create 
material realities by way of having full access um, to it and knowing how to wield it under your own authority. So that's what I have for you. A gentle reminder for those of you who are interested in um, mentorship, I have summer rates that are going until September the 1st. Um, I have a few more I have a few more vacancies for I want to say like the last week and a half kind of in August. So if mentorship is something that you have been interested in and you want to catch the summer rate, then please make sure to um, to email me or message me. You can do that through my site, which is listed below, or you can email me directly and let me know of your interest. My email is also in the description box below. Please know that I only take... Um, I only will book sessions and take appointments by way of you reaching out to me and emailing me. Um, for one thing, I won't approach you, but for another thing, um, I don't take bookings through my website. My website is a menu for you to see what I offer and then you can come at me through the contact page or you can email me and let me know what you're interested in. So I'm sending you guys so much love, joy, peace, stability, focus, clarity, okay, um, every beautiful thing under the sun that is ultimately your divine birthright for as long as you are walking in alignment with your truth and your power and your value, okay, I will see you guys again, take care, until next time, be well, Mwah.